Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Tell the Lord to give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And give you boldness and courage to speak the truth in love without looking at the faces of people. This morning, God has an instrument that he's going to use to bless us, to teach us, to open our eyes of understanding. I want you to commit the convener. Our Father in the Lord, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuyi, into the hand of the Lord. More strength from above that the Lord will give him. Perfect health the Lord will grant to him. Unction to function for our benefit this morning. Pray that the Lord will bestow upon him. Pray that his words will not fall to the ground. As the sower sow the seed, pray that the seed of the word of God is going to spread, is going to sow, is going to give out, will fall at a fatal heart and bear fruit in hundredfolds. The Bible says he maketh his angels spirit and his ministers flames of fire. That the fire of the Holy Ghost will be upon our Father in the Lord this morning. That the word that will come out of his mouth will burn like fire. Didn't our heart burn? When he was speaking unto us, that should be our testimony. And it will burn off every false doctrine. The word of God will burn off every carnality. The word of God coming from him will burn off every error. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Father, we thank you. Because you're a God that answered prayers. We have committed this program into your hand. And we believe this morning you will bless all the ministers. Not only here at the Alpha location, but globally. None will remain the same after this morning ministration from our Father in the Lord. In Jesus' name. Every form of distraction, take it away from us. We thank you, Father, because you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. A louder amen. amen. God bless you. You can have your seat. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. It's another time in the presence of the living God. And time with God is not a waste of time. Please can we rise on our feet as we worship God. I am your own. I am your own. Till the day you will go. Jesus, I am your own. I am your own. I am your own. I am your own. 
until the day you will come. Jesus, I am your own. I am your own. I am your own. I am your own. Till the day you will call. Jesus, I am your own. I am your own. I am your own, I am your own, till the day you will call, Jesus, one more time, I am your own, I am your own, I am your own, till the day
Praise the Lord. We can have our seats. Once again, I welcome you to the second day of Power for Productivity in His Service Ministers Conference, Professionals, Business Executive, and all church workers and ministers. And we thank God for the way, by the grace of God, he visited us on Friday. And I know that today 
will be greater than Friday. Amen. Just like your amen will be greater than Friday. Amen. Just like her, your hallelujah will be higher than that of Friday. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. We have a lot of people, all of us are special dignitaries, but want to just recognize few that are here. Although some told us, please, we don't want recognition. To so such people, we respect and we say, as you have come, God have recognized you. Amen. And God will bless you. Amen. Well, let's have this few, please. And the, those who came on later, let me have their list quickly. We have Professor Ken Nadi of University of Imo, or is it Imo University? Federal University of Were. It's over there. Please let me have the. Then we have Professor Ifi. Na, Dr. Ifi Nadi too, who is here too with the husband. God bless you. I have difficulty with the list because the universities are not attached, department not attached. Then we have Professor Augustine Anne. Department of Agriculture, UNN. I think is the dean there. God bless you. Dr. Maduka Chin Nyele, UNN. God bless you. We have Prof. Professor Cosmos Odo of Enugu State University. Have <laughs> Dr. Dennis Abba Baka, Enugu State University. <laughs> and so many other doctors and professors here. Also, we have the Kan Chairman of Enugu State Christian Association of Nigeria, Reverend Ambassador Emmanuel Ede is here. <laughs> Sir, can we welcome you? Is that the way you are clapping? <laughs> Amen. That the can chairman of Enugu State and has all he has been with us, he was with us on Friday throughout the crusade, he has always been there. And all that can exact him. Put your hand together for Jesus. We have the secretary to the PFN here with us, sir. You are welcome. Can you rise up? Sorry, your name escaped me. God bless you. I have so many executives of CAN and PFN here. Sirs, if you wouldn't mind because of want of time, can you be on your feet so that we welcome you and recognize you, please? PFN, CAN, and all that. Jam your hand together for Jesus. Amen. Also, pastors of other churches and workers from other churches that are here this morning, if you are there, please, you are especially welcome. If you are there, please, can we see your hands up? Can you please stand on your feet and wave at the congregation? Please, you're a pastor, you're a worker, you're not of deeper life. See the many of them 
and the camp choir is here too. Amen. We'll be on our feet to take a congregational song, please. Let's stand on our feet as we take the congregational song. Born fire of God, my lonesome soul possessed. Pure fire thou art, and I will dwell in thee. Light of my life, true source of every blessing, grant all my days one holy frame to be. Bonfire of God, thy grace and glory know. My cleansed heart shall be all fire within. Love all constraining, tenderness overflowing. One kindling passion, other lives to win. Bonfire of God, thy grove, their groven tongues bestow. Baptizing me with heavenly energy, touched with life code, off from thy altar grown, my punched teeth lips shall speak alone of thee, bonfire of God, with sevenfold refining tear mirrored from my deep, thy eyes shall see. In purest gold, thy perfect image shining. Thy Christ revealed in clear iradasi. Bonfire of God, thy own loving transcending. Let all I hold be thine and thine alone. Heart, mind, will. A sacrifice ascending, consumed by fire from out thy fiery throne. Thank you. 
Amen. Amen. Let's have our seats as we welcome the camp choir, please. The camp choir, the camp choir, please. Please, let's come up.
for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, if your language cannot edify one person, your wife, if your language cannot edify one person, your husband, if your language, if the speech of your mouth cannot edify the little circle in your family around you, how can you edify the body of Christ? We need to take all that into consideration that if you are going to be an edifier, a person that edifies, edifies the body of Christ, the edification charity begins at home. We have to look around. Am I edifying the people who are closest to me? Am I edifying the people? Am I charging them? Am I lifting them up? Am I empowering them? Am I encouraging them? The ministry is to edify the body of Christ. In verse 13, verse 13 says, till we all come in the unity of the faith till we all come in the unity of the faith that's the faith that believes in god and that relies on god that depends on god for everything and if the preacher the pastor the teacher the evangelist the prophet the apostle cannot even believe in god he cannot trust in god for Every need of his life is always depending on this and depending on that. And if he even goes to the dark world to depend upon those people that they don't claim to be Christians, they say they're idol worshippers, and a pastor and a preacher will go to them. And the fed a man there uh, doing something on the ground and giving you something to eat and giving you something to drink. He says, what do you want? You say, I'm a pastor before an idol worshiper. And I want my church to grow and do something for me. That man is not called of God. If you accept what I say, say amen. amen. <laughs> he wants some juju some voodoo some things done so that his church will grow and he give him something and he buries something there it's not depending on the father on the son on the holy ghost if he dies in that condition the bible says he will not get to heaven he'll go to hell because he did not depend on the power of the Lord. Give me power. I want to work miracles. The power comes from Christ. Comes from the Holy Spirit. If you want to be an evangelist, a dynamic evangelist, and you want to see souls saved, you want to see the sick healed, the secret is not in the hand of the idol worshiper that people go to and they want something. Whatever you get there, no matter how many people are healed by that kind of power on the last day, Jesus said, they would say, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we, done, have we not done many wonderful works in your name? But I will say unto them, Depart from me, ye that walk in iniquity, I never knew you. If we're going to serve the Lord, we'll come out straight, we'll come out open, and then we'll follow the pattern. Peter did not go to any kind of backyard power, a power giver, to be able to raise all that he raised and do all the miracles that he did. Paul the apostle did not go to any backyard power to do anything or everything he did. If you are like that, you have to do like they did in the Acts of the Apostles. You have to confess, you have to believe, and you have to burn all those things you had in the past because our God is enough. And Jesus is sufficient. And it says that all of us, the members, the ministers, were edifying them, were preaching to them, were enlightening them, were encouraging them until we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man 
unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children that the people will minister to, that our, that our, me, our members will minister to, and the people we evangelize, that they will not remain babes or children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the sledge of men and the cunning craftiness whereby the lie in wait to deceive. Verse 15, in verse 15, but speaking, speaking the truth, speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things. The purpose of the ministry, the essential of the ministry, it that we so teach and we so preach that the people who listen to us will grow up. They not be toddlers and children and infants, ignorant of the doctrines of the Bible and ignorant of the possibilities in Christ all their life. They grow up into him in all things, which is the hedge, even Christ. We're looking at three points in the message this morning. And we're looking at number one, the perfect priest with excellent ministry for all men. He is a model. He is a pattern. He is our goal. He is the one we're looking at. He did it and we can do it too. The perfect priest with excellent ministry for all men. Number two, the promised prophet with essential message and mandate. Christ had been prophesied that he will come and he came to do what had been told of him that he will come to do and in due time at the appropriate time he came and he came with essential message he never said anything redundant anything unnecessary anything that we don't need to hear he had no knowledge Knowledge of heaven, knowledge of angels, knowledge of men, knowledge of the earth, knowledge of history, knowledge of the present, and knowledge of prophecy. But he didn't give all that knowledge. He gave us the essential message, and he gave us the essential mandate. Number three, the precious promises for every member and minister. we we'll come to number one. Number one, we're looking at the perfect priest with excellent ministry for all men the perfect priest we're talking about christ in hebrews chapter 5 reading from verse 4 no man take a day's honor unto himself but he that is called of god as was aaron look at verse 5 it says so also christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest. He didn't just jump into that. Father, what should I do? Go be the high priest. And because of that, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son. Today have I begotten thee. We're looking at chapter 5, verse 9. Look at verse 9. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Please underline the words obey him. I've been traveling around and I find there are people who think they are saved when they're living in disobedience. I found people who think they're born again and they're living in a diametrical opposite thing to what Christ has said. They live in all kinds of sins, all kinds of evil, and they do all kinds of, you know, gymnastics, and they still claim to be members of the body of Christ. And they claim to be ministers in the kingdom of God. Understand, he, because of what he suffered, he provided, he's become the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Then in verse 10, in verse 10, called of God 
and high priest, called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. We divide this to three parts. Look at number one. Number one is the excellent ministry of our high priest. Number two is the exalted minister in the heavenly places. And number three is our expected ministry as the holy priesthood. Look at number one. Number one, the excellent ministry of our high priest, our high priest. What's his ministry? Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. In Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, it says, Wherefore he, Christ, he, the Savior, he, our Lord, he, the high priest, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. We don't come unto God by an angel. We don't come unto God by the founder of our denomination. We don't come unto God on the basis of our title. This is who I am. And then I come to the presence of God and say, God, I'm talking to you. And they don't mention Jesus. They don't go through Jesus. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. He is the only door by which we can get to the Father, by which we can get to heaven. He tells us wherefore he, our Christ, our Savior, our Lord, is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, for such an high priest Christ became us, who is holy, that's Christ, harmless, that's Christ, harmless, that's Christ, you know, in some of the churches and assemblies and fellowships, we uh, fear some people. And it's because of what they say. They say here, if you don't do everything I say, and you are quoting Bible to me, you are quoting Bible to me, you look like you've gone to deeper life. Bible, Bible. If you don't do what I tell you to do, and I place a curse on you, nobody in your country, nobody in any country can get you from there. Now, Christ is not like that. Those who hurt other people, harm other people, curse other people, injure other people, and they pursue them with a kind of power that will destroy their lives, that's not Christ. Look at Christ. Because he is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. That's our Savior. I will be like him. You'll be like him in Jesus' name. Look at number two there. Number two there is the exalted minister in the heavenly places. Exalted. Look at Hebrews chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 1 now. Of the things which we have spoken this is the sum. This is the summary. And this is the logical conclusion. We have such an high priest. And he sat on the right hand of the throne of majesty in the heavens. Look at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, Minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. He tells us in verse 6, it says, But now, as he obtained a more excellent ministry, a more excellent ministry. Now, if you're going to follow after a pattern, and you pick Moses, excellent, not the more excellent ministry. Aaron, excellent, not the more excellent. David, excellent, not the most Excel, not the more excellent, but he, Christ, above angels, above men, above religious people of any generation, any dispensation, 
now he has obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is not that he was not that he will be in the future in the millennium even to this present time he is the mediator of a better covenant there are many covenants in the in the bible abrahamic covenant this one is a better covenant noahic covenant this one is a better co mosaic covenant this one is a better co davidic covenant this one is a better covenant a covenant with the children of israel but this one a better covenant he now he has obtained a more excellent ministry and is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises we're looking at, uh, at ephesians chapter one looking at verse three ephesians chapter one verse three blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ look at that we come by conversion by salvation by regeneration, by the renewal of our very nature, and it lifts us up in heavenly places, spiritually, heavenly places, as we remain and abide in the heavenly places in Christ, then all the spiritual blessings come. But if we degrade ourselves and we go to earthly places, earthly dungeons, earthly valleys, earthly powers, then you stop the flow of the spiritual blessings in your life. But he, our God, through Christ, he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Abide there. Stay with him there, united with Christ. Look at chapter 2 of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2, I'm looking at verse 6. He has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. If your seat is absent and you are not sitting together with Christ, learning of Christ, beholding the beauty and the glory of Christ, satisfied in the presence of Christ, your seat is vacant. Where is he? Where is he? It's gone to some backyard power giver. It's not there. Then you're not going to have the ministry he calls us to have. But you remain, you abide, you are seated in heavenly places in Christ. You don't deviate to tradition, you don't deviate to idolatry, you don't deviate to any other thing, not even psychology, not the philosophy of men. You abide and remain there and you see together with him in heavenly places, untold, unnumbered blessings, will be yours even this morning in Jesus' name. We're coming to number three. Number three is the expected ministry. As the holy priesthood. Expected ministry. Uh, I was appointed a teacher in school to teach them a particular subject. And they, were, they put me in the class preparing for the WAEC exam. And they had an expectation of me. Another teacher had been there before, but now they said they wanted me. Now, it's not just praise the Lord, I'm a teacher. Praise the Lord, I'm teaching the final classes. They had expectation. You're a medical doctor, and they give you a license to practice. And it's not just, I'm a doctor, I have license to practice the Medical National Association. They have an expectation. And the, and the patients that come, the people that are brought there for you to handle, they have expectation. Heaven has expectation. 
He put us in the ministry. Whatever the title and whatever the position, there is the expected ministry and the holy priesthood. And it will start with our name, our title, and our description as the holy priesthood. Look at First Peter chapter 2, and I read from verse 9. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood, dignified, royal, kingly, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. Look at that. Look at the description of the people. And we who are called into the ministry, and we who are members of the body of Christ, there is an expectation, and it's in that, in that verse, chosen generation. There are people who are not chosen. Why? Because they have not responded to the call, call to repentance, call to righteousness, and call to regeneration. Because they have not responded, they are not chosen. It says many are called, but few are chosen. Now we're part of that chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a priesthood that is dignified and uh, honored, royal priesthood that is kingly and the behavior, the action, the disposition and the appearance anywhere they can tell he's different. When you see a doctor, he dresses like a doctor. He is different. She is different. And when you see a four man, they are constructing the road. As you go, nobody needs to point and say that the four man, what the appearance and what the control and what the standing firm, you can tell that the four man, that's the engineer there, that's the construction person. You can see him there as he talks. It's, not, it's looking at the pattern. It's looking at the drawing. And he's doing everything everything you can tell and ministers people should be able to tell in your comportment in your conduct in your life in your character they should be able to tell royal priesthood and holy nation you know somebody is preaching and he said hey let look at me and listen to me i don't believe in holiness. You are not part of that holy nation. If you are part of that holy nation, you'll not be contradicting your call. You'll not be contradicting the call of Christ upon yourself. It says you're supposed to be a holy nation and you come to tell the public and you come to tell the world that you are not holy and that you don't believe in holiness. You know why they say that? Because uh, you you know, there are some ladies in the congregation there and they've been messing up together and they want to declare openly, lady, don't judge me, I'm still a preacher, I'm still a pastor, I'm still a leader. I don't believe in holiness. If you don't quit in that condition, you'll be kind of expelled on the final day. It's called us to be a holy nation, a peculiar people that he should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And I pray that this expectation will be fulfilled in every life in Jesus' name. Look at Matthew chapter 28. I'm reading from verse 18. Matthew chapter 28. We're looking at verse 18. It says, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Amen. Amen. Christ, the Father honored him. Christ, the Father exalted him. Christ, the Father positioned him to be higher than the highest in the whole universe because now he has given him all power, all authority in heaven and in earth. Look at verse 19. Verse 19 says, Go ye therefore. Therefore, because you are with me, I'm with you. And because all power is given unto me, and because no power on earth can bring you down as you stay in the place 
I put you. Go ye therefore and teach how many nations? All nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, teaching them to observe all things. Remember, in all nations, to every creature, everyone will preach you. Everyone will evangelize. Everyone will teach. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Do you know there are preachers who change the message from city to city? Ah, you can preach that in Lagos, but not in many city. Nothing like that. You can preach that in Nigeria, but not in Sierra Leone. Nothing like that. You can preach that in Africa, but not in America. Nothing like that. Teaching them, all the nations, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And if you do that, and lo, I am with you. How often? Always. Always. You know why some people don't preach everything? They know the Lord has taught us in the Bible. When they go to those places, this is unfamiliar ground. I've never met these people before. And I don't know the people that hold the power and the authority. I don't know what they will do unto me. They don't believe that the Lord of all power, all authority is with them everywhere they go. Anywhere they go, they are searching. Who are the people, the decision makers here? Who are the people, the power holders here? Who are the people, the king makers here? That if I know them, then... I will have freedom once they give me the liberty and the license. The liberty and the license that Christ has given them is not enough. He has given us liberty. He has given us license. Amen. And he says, with that liberty and with that license, it's the one that called us. It's the one that is going to judge our ministry on the final day. We don't have to be main pleasers. You know, bow here, bow there, until our back is bent and we cannot lift up our backs anymore because Christ is with us and he is for us and he has commanded us and this is what he expects and this is what he will judge on the final day teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you and lo I am with you always even unto the end of the world yeah. and everybody shout Amen. We're coming to point uh, number two now. Number two, the promised prophet with essential message and mandate. The promised uh, prophet, that's Christ. He was promised and then we're told he has the essential message and the essential mandate. We'll divide this to three parts. Number one, the prophecy and the decree concerning Christ. Number two, the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Number three, the preaching of the declarations of Christ. Let's look at number one. Number one, the prophecy and decree concerning Christ. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, Reading from verse 18, it says, And I will raise them up a prophet, capital P, from among their brethren, like unto thee, Moses, and will put my words in his mouth. God said, I will put my words in his mouth. Moses, you're like the primary school teacher. And you are beginning the spiritual education of the children of Israel. And everything I've told you, everything I put in your mouth and you declare is at this 
preliminary level now the higher one the greater one the holier one the the heavenly one is coming and when he comes i will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that i shall command him he's talking about christ look at verse 19 verse 19 says and it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words which i shall speak in my name i will require each of him how do we know that he's talking about christ look at acts chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 22 and for Moses truly said unto the fathers, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me, unto me Moses, him shall ye hear in all things. He'll talk about repentance here. He'll talk about restitution here. He'll talk about being born again, regeneration, hear him. He'll talk about righteous life, except righteousness be a greater than the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. He shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of God. He'll talk about purity of heart. He'll talk about sanctification, hear ye him. He'll talk about marriage, one man, one wife, until death do us part. I'll put my word in his mouth, hear him. He'll talk of the harvest. He'll talk of evangelism, hear ye him. He'll talk about healing, and he will pronounce the healing upon the people, hear ye him. He'll talk about deliverance, he shall cast out devil, hear ye him. The totality of everything that he brought. He'll talk about his coming again. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in me, ye believe in God also. He says in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. He's coming. All that he said, we're not picking and choosing. He prophesied, shall the Lord your God resolve unto you. Of your brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, it tells us unto you, first God, having raised up his son, Jesus, he now identified that prophet to come. Having raised up his son, Jesus sent him to bless you. In turning away every one of you from his iniquity. Uh, we're looking at uh, number two here. Number two, we're looking at the principles of the doctrines of Christ. He has called us and he says, I am going, but I put you in place as my ambassadors. And what I should have been preaching, go preach. What I should have been doing, go do. What I should have been emphasizing, if I were here on the earth, go and emphasize that anywhere, everywhere you go. And it's giving us the principles of the doctrine of Christ. It says in chapter 6 of Hebrews, reading from verse 1, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of of Christ, <laughs> what does that mean? Don't preach that again. Don't say that again. It says, like a builder, laid the foundation. Now, leaving the um, leaving the foundation, let's build the walls. Let's put all the structures, and let's go to the roof. We cannot be on the foundation every time. We're building a sanctuary. We're building a house. We build the walls and we build the roof. We build everything in uh, living the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Let us go on uh, unto perfection. Unto perfection. That's, that's what the word says. Not laying again uh, 
the foundation. Now, what are the principles of the doctrine of Christ? Number one, repentance from dead works. What are dead works? The works of a dead man. Dead in sins and trespasses. It's not born again yet. It's not come to life in Christ. And it's dead. All the works he does. He might, you know, give money. He might even preach. He might even pray. He might go to, you know, whatever area and say, hey, I'm delivering people. All the activities, all the actions, all the works, all the efforts of a dead man, they are dead works. And he says, we should repent from that. That is the foundation of the doctrine of Christ. And then he says, he, he tells us, and of faith towards God. That's at the foundation. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Only believe, fear not, only believe. And that daughter, that son, that person will be healed. The faith is the foundation. Look at verse 2. It tells us in verse 2, it says, And of the doctrine of baptisms, plural, water baptism, and then Holy Ghost baptism, and baptism in persecution and suffering, or baptism, because he wants you to bear your cross and follow him. He wants you to deny yourself and follow him. And whatever the suffering, whatever the persecution, it says you are baptized baptized in that baptism that I am baptized with the doctrine of water baptism, spirit baptism, and baptism in persecution. And then it says of laying on of hands. That's not the climax of ministry. That's not the peak of ministry. It's the regular foundation of the doctrine of Christ and of the resurrection of the dead that Christ will come and the dead will be raised incorruptible and that also there will be the rapture that when he comes I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be made alive in a twinkling of an eye, in a moment, as if you are blinking your eye, the trumpet will sound, and then the dead will Christ, and we who remain alive shall be caught up together with them. The rapture, the resurrection is part of the doctrine of Christ and the and of eternal judgment. There'll be the white gray throne judgment. Some will go to the lake of fire. Those who are not born again, although they are claiming to be born again, those whose lives do not reflect the new birth, the salvation, the regeneration, the change of life, all those people whose names are not found, reaching, kept in the book of life, they go to the lake of fire, but the people who are born again, the people who are living the righteous life, the people who are pure in heart, for they shall see God, then they'll go finally to heaven and, we, and be with him forever and ever and ever. Yeah. You'll be there in Jesus' name. It's not talk of mouth, repentance. It's not talk of mouth, restitution. You know what? When I became a Christian, and I heard about restitution, there was one thought that always was in my heart. I don't want to do anything that I have to make restitution for, and then I'll find it difficult to make the restitution. You know, challenges will come, trials will come, and situations will come that will make me, the pastor is not here, and my, the members of the church, my friends are not here. I could have done this, but if I do that, eventually, I'll have to make restitution, and I don't want that. I don't want to make, you know, this journey because of the shame it will bring, and therefore, I restrain myself in the spirit of God and by the grace of God that whatever I will not be willing or able to make restitution for, I will not do. You know, when you live by the principle of the doctrine of Christ, it keeps you straight. It keeps you firm. And it makes your life upright. 
your life will be our prize. Yeah. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, we're looking at verse 10. In verse 10 it says, according to the grace of God, everything is by the grace of God. Salvation by the grace of God. Sanctification by the grace of God. Spirit baptism by the grace of God. Service by the grace of God. According to the grace which was the grace of God which was given to me. As a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. Have you laid the foundation? The foundation of Christ our Savior. Christ our healer. Christ, our sanctifier. Christ, our baptizer in the Holy Ghost. Christ, the coming king. We laid the foundation. If you are fearful, go for more grace. If you are fidgeting, go for more grace. If you are looking at the faces of people and you fear the frowns of men. And because of that, you cannot declare the totality of the word of God Go for grace. All those who have done it before us, they had grace according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereupon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth Thereupon, that's Paul the Apostle. He said, I've laid the foundation. But you know, some people, after laying the foundation, they're not in charge anymore. They're not in control anymore. They say, well, others are they're building on the foundation. We have established the foundation of salvation, of sanctification, of the essential, crucial doctrines of the Bible. Whatever they build on is between them and God. Actually, the man is afraid. He's afraid to confront them. My friend, what are you building on the foundation? Are you building another kind of doctrine? First, they cannot say that. They fear people. That's why, because of the fear, they say it's between them and God. Whatever they're doing, I have done my part. Paul, the apostle, said, yes, I've done my part. I laid the foundation. But I examined Titus. What are you doing there? Timothy, what are you doing there? Silas, what are you doing there? And he said, let every man, let every minister take heed how he buildeth thereupon. In verse 11, it says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And verse 12, verse 12 now, If any man builds upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious tools, wood, he is trouble. In verse 13, it says, Every man's work shall be made manifest. Whatever we do, it's not just the action, it's the intention, it's the attitude. If the disposition we have, are you angry and therefore you say what you say? Are you frustrated and then you say what you say? Are you offended that you are trying to revenge on somebody and you say what you say? It's not just the action. It's the disposition of heart, the attitude of the heart. It says, for every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try the fire shall test every man's work of what sort it is. I pray when that reckoning day comes, your work will stand. Yeah. We're coming to number three here. Number three, the preaching of the declarations of Christ. The preaching of the declarations of Christ. Here, we need to watch. Uh, because there are many preachers. In fact, the more wrong they are, the more bold they are. You see, I'm going to tell you this now. You see, take it, put it on record. This one is not in the Bible, but I, prophet so and so, I, preacher so and so, I, 
apostle so and so, I say, he put themselves at par with Christ. Not only that, above Christ. And they put down, and they demolish, and they destroy, and they scatter everything Christ has said. And they put themselves at the final authority. On the day of judgment, you will discover that you cannot be the final authority. And your authority will authorize heaven to kick you out. Because you know, anybody that exalts himself above Christ the Savior, look at the price the Savior paid. And look at everything he sacrificed. And now he gave us this. And he says, this is what to declare. All the declarations of Christ. And then you come on. You have not been nailed on the cross. You have not said, Father, Father, my God, why have you forsaken me? You have not cried, I thirst. You have not suffered anything, anything to the inter intensity, uh, the, le the literal or the least uh, suffering of Christ. You have not done that. And now you put yourself, where were you born? Where did you see the Bible? Where did you meet Christ? And now you put yourself above Christ and you tell members of the church and you put them under your bondage and you say, I say, well, everyone forgets about you, we'll forget about you. Give me a good amen. amen. And Jesus came after resurrection and Jesus came, the stone was rolled away and Jesus